So I'm Marcella Keating. I'm a second year music student at Newnham and I'm the composer of The Iris. And I'm Harriet Truscott and I'm a poet. I'm a Newnham alumna, but I'm also communications director at Newnham College and I'm the librettist of the <laughs> new work, the, the Iris. And this is a really exciting moment for me and Marcella because we've been collaborating on this new composition for the last nine months mm, or so, about that time. all the way through COVID. <laughs> and we've never actually met before. We did the whole collaboration mm. through email. Yeah, and it was so interesting to just receive slightly odd emails from you, just being like, here's a new draft, here's this thing, here's this thing. It was really exciting to kind of have that really interesting collaborative experience that I feel like is so present in COVID time, but also feels like it can be transferred into our normal time and space. Yeah. yeah, that's a really interesting way to look at it, because in some ways, because we were so separate, I think if, if it had been in normal times, mm. we would have probably got together yeah. in, in, in this room, in the old labs, <laughs> we would have sat down, we would have discussed it. Yeah. It would have been a much more formal collaboration process, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? And yeah, I, think I mean, it was so interesting when I got the poem in, because normally whenever I'm given a poem or I discover a poem that I then want to set to music, it's always kind of like a three-step process where I have to find a way in and I have to find a way of translating something that is a text and is intended to be read and is intended to be read as a poem and then I have to find a way to make that fit to music or make that fit to my style. Whereas with yours, it was just like four very clear sections, four a very clear like linear structure and it made my life so much easier because I could just take this and go, okay, let's make this music. And it was so easy for me. I felt that I wasn't the one creating the artwork. I felt that was going to be you. And that I was perhaps the, the, the structure, the skeleton, mm. that um, I was going to create a skeleton that you were really going to give life to. Um, I mean, it's interesting to me because I really don't see it that way at all. Really? Yeah, whenever I'm... I write a lot of vocal music and I write a lot of things that involve text, even if it's just as, like, an influence and doesn't actually end up being a vocal piece or whatever. But to me, it's like, if I'm not serving that text and if I'm not serving the things that I see in that text, then I've done my job wrong. Like, it is my responsibility to, like, put some of my feelings and my emotions in there. But above all else, it's like you've set out this very like clear story this very clear narrative and it is my job to respond to the emotions i see in that so i definitely don't view it as a skeleton for me to like translate like it's already like a piece of art it's just my job to maybe like make it a slightly different piece of art oh that's that is really interesting because we ought to explain to the um to the listeners that um it's got a structure so we're, we're talking about irises and it's actually mm. irises plural rather mm. than um just one iris um, and it goes through the seasons so we've got spring summer autumn and winter mm. and four different irises um and which each which flower in a different season of the year mm. and um and each of them is explored through different metaphors and which um explores a different a different angle of um of humanity perhaps if that's not too pretentious to say <laughs> and so it could you, you could have created a really simple song mm. out of it and that's totally not what you did <laughs> yeah i mean i looked at it and i was like oh, okay there's one route i could go down here which is very him repeat the same thing like there is the that, structure that was, that was totally what i was expecting <laughs> <laughs> because it is like a four line structure four stanzas i was like okay i could probably do this but i was like the more interesting thing is there's clearly like different emotions and different feelings that are being represented within each season and i was like it's my job to make that interesting and not do a whole like vivaldi seasons thing it's my job to kind of put my own spin on it and respond to what you were saying about each season and that was a really fun challenge for me yeah because actually it's much less about the the seasons per se than about mm. the different emotions and the mm. different stages of humanity that we pass through mm. throughout our lives and I think that's what you've really pulled out in your in your music and that's what was so exciting when I when you first sent me the um your first approach um and I was I was just I was totally totally taken aback and I was just like oh wow whoa whoa, <laughs> whoa not what I expected I mean I feel like that unexpectedness was like so present in the poem itself yeah. so 
the ways in which like you associated these different irises with emotions so like the line about in the summer verse about it showing you compassion it was such an interesting line to me and it gave me a really good insight into the way in which you were viewing each season and so when I was creating my structure of like basically like massive textures for spring and then it kind of gradually devolving and becoming more and more fragmented as the seasons went along that was so easy to me because you had already outlined that completely in your poem but there's a really lovely sense of hope I felt that like remained throughout and so that little like repeated refrain coming back was my way of kind of alluding to that hope remaining in the cyclarity of all of these seasons. I think it's it's really interesting that we were writing it separated during mm. COVID, unable to collaborate face to face, and that that sense of hope came through. I think I got asked to write for Full Choir, so like yeah. SATV. Yeah. And then I was like, this needs some extra parts in there because a lot of my stuff tends to deal with slightly unusual harmonies and I find sometimes only having four notes to play with can be slightly restrictive and I knew that if I was going to do this whole like devolution of fragments particularly towards the end when you just go down to a single solo voice from each part singing and that's so atmospheric for winter we see we see we see the uh, the year coming to a close Mm. and we see what's left and what's left is wisdom I mean I really love eight voice pieces I tend to write quite a lot of them just because I think it gives you enough scope to have these massive sounds but it also means that when you've got those massive sounds you can contrast it so beautifully with something so simple so I remember talking to my composition supervisor about the summer section and about kind of some of the slight difficulties I was having with it and he was like, well, you clearly know what you're doing here because that one moment where the single alto voice like emerges, yeah, he yeah, was like, yeah. that's Soaring just what upwards. you've got to do yeah, for the yeah. rest of the section. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just about finding kind of interesting ways to use such a big ensemble yes. that has the capacity to be so big and just do it very delicately and not be yeah. afraid to use like silence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that is that's something which really comes across. But of course, we've now got the disadvantage of, of you having used the the big eight part ensemble, which is that we can't actually have it premiered uh, at the virtual festival. Well, brilliant! Thank you so much for working with me on no, this. It's and been an absolute pleasure. Let's let's look forward to the premiere. Yes, definitely.